Hello, welcome to the session where we will talk about uh, how to schedule jobs in SAP S4 HANA using application jobs. Uh, in the previous session, we looked at the theory part of it, uh, how the application jobs works behind the scenes. Uh, but today we will look at the coding aspect of it. Um, and all this code is going to be in the GitHub repository. I will leave a link in the description below uh, so you can use this and, um, uh, and make modifications to suit your needs. Um, so first thing first, uh, I've created a package, and this package uh, you can already see, it is set for ABAP for cloud development. Uh, make sure that the software component also is for ABAP, uh, is also cloud ready. Uh, don't uh, inherit from the home uh, software component. Okay, so we have the package ready, and uh, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a table. And my goal is uh, every one minute or so, uh, I want to increment this cost by a specified number. And I want to do it for a maximum of three times. So that is my goal. Uh, so this table is fairly straightforward. Uh, there are a couple of fields here, name, description, and cost. And uh, the cost field, I'm going to increment every one minute uh, for a maximum of three times uh, with a specified number that you can pass in as an input parameter. So go ahead and uh, uh, activate this. And then I have another class, uh, and this is uh, going to initialize the data in this field, uh, in this table. Uh, so all this is a very simple class. All it's uh, doing is it's going and uh, deleting the uh, all the rows to start with, and then it's going to go ahead and insert just one row. And the initial cost is going to be 200. OK, so now let me go ahead and run this. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and run this uh, application. Uh, so what it's going to do is it's going to insert this one row uh, with the initial value of 200 for the cost field. Uh, so if I go into my products table itself, and if I open it, uh, the value for the initial row uh, should have a value of uh, 200. So everything is good. Uh, so the next thing I want to do is create this uh, business logic class. Uh, so in the business logic class, uh, I need to implement two interfaces, uh, the design time interface and the runtime interface. Now in the design time interface, uh, there is this method get parameters that I need to implement. Uh, basically, uh, this is where you pass in the input parameters for the task that you want to run on a scheduled basis. Uh, in our case, uh, what I want to do is I want to have uh, the cost field uh, incremented by a specific, uh, by some kind, of, some random number, right? And this random number I will pass in as an input parameter. Uh, so here. Uh, I have the name of the input parameter, I have the data type, and so on. And I also have the default value for the input parameter in case the value is not uh, specified. Uh, so this is uh, something that you would, you could, in your use case, you could have uh, multiple input parameters. Uh, but in my simple use case, I only have one. Uh, but you can simply uh, use this uh, code snippet to have any number of uh, input parameters. Now, the runtime interface, uh, this is the logic that you want to run uh, on a schedule basis. And in my case, what I want to do is, um, uh, first I want to read this incremental value, the P underscore increment value. So once I read this value, uh, then I'm going to go ahead and uh, take all the rows in the table, and I'm going to increment the value of the cost field. Uh, I have some EML date, uh, code here, code snippet here, uh, and I'm going to update the business uh, object, and then I'm going to commit this uh, uh, business object as well. Now, the next thing we want to do is uh, we want to go through the wrap development model uh, for this table, create the data definition, the behavior definition, and so on. Uh, but I will talk about it later. But at this moment, I want to talk about how to create the catalog and the template. Uh, but like I said before, uh, you will go through the layering uh, process first uh, before you talk before you create the catalog and the template. Uh, so go ahead and create this class here uh, to create the catalog and the template. Uh, so I give a name for the catalog. I give a name for the template. Uh, but the key thing is uh, that this uh, catalog needs to be tied to this uh, business logic class that you just created. Uh, so what you would do is uh, when you call this method to create the catalog, uh, make sure you pass in the proper name, uh, the exact name for the uh, business logic class. 
and uh, this will go ahead and create the catalog entry for you. Uh, and then you can have any number of templates. You can create any number of templates for the catalog. Uh, but in our case, we are only going to create one template, and this template is going to be named Z. Uh, products template v5 and when you create the template you associate it with the catalog that you just created uh, so if I go ahead and run this uh, this should go ahead and create the catalog and the template uh, in my case it failed uh, because uh, the object already exists uh, so you can see that I already have uh, the objects already created uh, so uh, or where is it uh, here I have the objects already created uh, so it did not create it for me uh, but it will go ahead and create it for you Okay, so now we have uh, the catalog and the template created. Uh, now what I want to do is uh, I want to go ahead and uh, add, like make it a business object, right? This table that I created. In fact, that's the first thing that I should have done. Um, like before I create the catalog and the template, uh, what I need to do is uh, I need to create this uh, uh, this uh, data definitions uh, based on this table. Uh, so this is, uh, you're probably familiar with the wrap model. Uh, so here you create this interface view, the inter interface CDS view. Uh, basically, here you can choose all the fields, uh, give some alias, uh, and mark it as a root view entity. So this is uh, what I have done. And you can also see that I've changed the, uh, changed the column names uh, slightly. I've uh, capitalized it. Uh, so this is the interface uh, CDS view. Uh, you're probably familiar with it. And I've also created a consumption CDS view as well, or based on this interface CDS view. Uh, so here I'm simply selecting all of the fields. Uh, but if you had a lot of fields, uh, you don't have to select all the fields. But here I have selected all the fields. Uh, then what I have done is I have created the behavior definition. Uh, so in this behavior definition, we are using the managed implementation. Uh, so all of this, uh, if you have used the wrap model, you should be familiar with. Uh, basically, I'm just uh, going through the layers of the wrap model. Uh, so and I'm using the managed implementation. Uh, so nothing. So it's not like we are we are doing the code. Uh, everything is taken care of uh, uh, by the framework. Uh, but we just go through these layers. And then here I have the consumption behavior definition as well. And once I have done all of this, uh, then uh, then is when I should go ahead and create the catalog and the template. Uh, so let's say I've created this uh, successfully. Uh, then uh, we go to the last step uh, where we actually trigger this uh, template. Uh, so for this, I have uh, this uh, maintain job uh, class that I've created. Uh, so here in this maintain job class, our goal is to uh, provide the schedule. Uh, with which uh, this needs to be run. Uh, so we are going to provide the schedule. Uh, we are also going to tell which template to run. Uh, and we are also going to provide the, uh, the input parameter value. Uh, so here I'm providing the template that I want to run. Now this template is tied to the catalog, uh, which in turn is tied to the business logic case, uh, class. Uh, so we have uh, the template here, uh, uh, and make sure that you provide the template name correctly. Uh, and here uh, we are also going to provide the uh, the schedule in which it needs to run. Now you have a variety of options uh, when you have the code. You have a lot of flexibility in creating uh, the schedule. Uh, but in my case, uh, you can see that I'm using minutes. Uh, so and then every minute, uh, so um, one every one minute, it's going to run this. And the maximum number of iterations is three. Uh, but like I said, uh, there are plenty of options available. Uh, so check the help document uh, if you have some complex requirements uh, for the scheduling case. Uh, so now once this is done, uh, you have uh, these uh, schedule for every minute for a maximum of three times. Uh, now what you also want to do is you want to pass in a value for this increment. Uh, so here, uh, this is the value that I'm going to give to the increment uh, P underscore increment. Uh, so this is the value that I have uh, added to this internal table. Uh, so the schedule is set, uh, the input value is set. I can put any value here, five or six or seven, whatever I want, uh, so, and that's how much uh, the cost will get incremented. 
Now, I, all I need to do is uh, call this the scheduled job. Uh, so I'm going to call this a scheduled job here. I'm going to pass in the template name, and I'm going to pass in this internal table that has the scheduling info. I'm also going to pass in the internal table that has the job parameters. Uh, so all of this I'm going to pass, and also when I need to start. I want to start it right now. OK, let me go ahead and run this. So I go to run as and uh, ABAP application console. Uh, so you can see that the application job is now scheduled. Uh, so if I now go to the application jobs itself, uh, so if I go into my jobs here, uh, I hit refresh, uh, you can see that there are three tasks that are scheduled. Uh, and if I go inside of it, uh, I should be able to see the value for the input parameter as well. Uh, so you can see that my input parameter value is uh, 3. Uh, we know that the default value is 1 if we don't pass it in. Um, so what the business logic uh, is going to do uh, is it's uh, going to uh, use this, it's going to read this input parameter. Uh, this is 3, and this is uh, going to go ahead and increment the cost by 3. And we also also have uh, the scheduled information, the scheduling information here. Uh, so right now the time is 1:35, uh, and it should uh, run right now. Uh, so if I go back here, uh, let me go ahead and hit go. It should have uh, at least started running. Okay, so you can see that it went into the finished state. Uh, so the time is now 1:36. Uh, so uh, it has uh, completed the first run. Uh, there are still two more. Uh, uh, tasks that are scheduled uh, because we are going to run every one minute. Uh, and now if I go into my table itself, uh, so if I go into my table here, uh, you will see that the value, the initial value, which was 200, uh, has now been incremented by 3. Uh, so you can see that the value is uh, 203. Uh, and uh, at some stage it will become 206, and some at some stage it will become 207 as well, uh, once uh, this uh, it becomes 137 or so. Okay, so that's how you would uh, uh, implement the scheduling part of it. Uh, so the GitHub repository itself, I will put in the uh, in the description below. Uh, just uh, use the you can use it pretty much verbatim, and then make uh, changes according to your needs. Uh, obviously, the uh, business logic is something that you will change. Uh, you won't be incrementing cost by three. Uh, but anyways, uh, but you get the gist of it. Uh, just uh, change the business logic. Uh, use your own business objects. Um, and uh, you can use the GitHub as a template uh, to meet your needs. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks. Bye.